In this video, we're going to talk about how to properly staff your media ministry and what positions need to be there. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel we focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron on patreon.com. Link is in the description. So, um, at least in my state, we're getting to the point where I think this Saturday, um, churches are going to be able to meet again at 50% occupancy or something like that. And I think this is just a good time that, a, you know, the, the wave is somewhat over. And I think a lot of people were, have been thrown into trying to put all this stuff together in a media ministry where most didn't have it. So what I wanted to do in this video is just kind of talk through, at least from my perspective, on what I know is needed at my media ministry. And maybe y'all can learn from something from that if you are just getting started with your media ministry or you know, you're starting from scratch or you're redefining, reinventing your media ministry because of events for the last two months. So number one, I think in staffing or positions in your media ministry, you need to have a head, somebody that's gonna be accountable for everything. And I guess you can kind of say in my church, I'm kind of that position. I'm the chair, the president or whatever of the media ministry. And I'm pretty much the, the way I guess I try to do that is I'm the one person so that that information is funneled through one person and it's not handled by multiple people. And then it's like, oh, well, this can't be reached and this, this, and this. And I, I guess I do that because I don't, at least for me, how I kind of run my media ministry, I don't want everybody else in the media ministry to get bombarded with phone calls. Meaning that if y'all need something, let it come to me and then I can disseminate that information out so that way I know it's clear and concise and we really don't have to worry about that. And I think that head of your media ministry honestly needs to be well versed in everything that goes on in the media ministry um, because like again, this last couple of months, I've ran everything for our live stream. Um, and it's just that, granted, you know, I, I bounce around, but the idea is you need somebody that's gonna be able to lead as well as be able to train everybody in your media ministry. And you really need to be well-versed in all of the, the equipment. I think that needs to be someone who can get stuff organized and things like that. So I think number one, and I'm writing these down as well too, is you just need a um, a head or a chairman or whatever title you want to be president um, over your media ministry. Now, number two, and again, this is these suggestions are even things that I don't have currently here, but this is wishful thinking of I honestly how I would like it to be done is we have our audio board right over here. I think audio is so important, just like it is on YouTube. Your video can look like trash, but if your audio is trash, which I've heard from so many people on comments, oh, your music's too loud, this, this, and this from videos from last year, which I really can't correct. Um, people will watch, well, excuse me, people will listen to your video, even if the video quality is bad. So it doesn't matter what the camera is, but your sound is important. That's the same thing with your media ministry. Inside the church or on your live stream, if the audio is horrible, you will be known immediately um, about that. If the video on the walls or something like that are bad, uh, that's tolerable, but it needs to be heard. So with that, there needs to be one person that's dedicated 100% of the time just for handling the audio, balancing the mics, having the, the mixes that are going out to the live stream, make sure that's high quality. Um, it needs to be one dedicated sound engineer, if you wanna call it that. You know, and then, I mean, that's their primary focus is just nothing but mics, the sound, all day long, throughout the entire service. Um, 
And honestly, because that's one of those jobs that you need to be in headphones or whatever the type of setup that you're at, listening to every aspect of the sound, paying attention if people are flagging, because I've been guilty of this, flagging my arms and waving my arms like crazy, trying to get people's attention because the mics are off, they're not balanced, something like that. That person needs to be completely locked in to whatever is going on and handling the sound for everything. So that's, they should not be trying to do multiple things at the same time. And then number three is you need somebody to be a video director. Now this could be jumped between the head chair or again, like for me, if it, if it was the head, that means that person would have to be here every single Sunday. And what I like to do is have it to where there's a rotation to where everybody has some form of break. If you have enough people to do that, that's great. If not, the, the head, the chair can double as a director, but just like any like Super Bowl or something like that, every video production has somebody who is the director who's just doing the flow. Now for us, that video director could also be the person who's manning, and again, we're using the ATEM television studio. They are man, manning which camera goes here and there and everything like that. Now, in some churches, that director, all he's doing is directing. He's not physically touching anything. So, uh, again, I would say you have a video director who's organizing which camera is where, what shot is going to be done, what needs to be put up on screen at the same time, just organizing all that and keeping the flow directly of everything. So that's a video director. Now, Again, depending on how many cameras you got, you need cameramen. Um, people operating the cameras. Um, ideally, you will want these people in headphones. Like in my setup right here, we're within arm's reach of each other, so we don't need headphones. We can whisper and people can still hear. But if you have people who are manned on the floor in the sanctuary and stuff like that, consider putting them in um, a walkie-talkie, headphones, something like that, so the director can communicate to them saying, hey, can I get a shot of the pulpit? Can I get a shot of this soloist? Can I get a shot of um, camera two? Can you be pointed to the musicians and then they direct over to the person who's handling the switcher or whatever, or they're doing it themselves. You know, so you want, obviously you want to have cameramen for the amount of cameras you got, or if you have all of them be remoted, like remote control over PTZ, and they just press a button and they can change the cameras, then that's great too. Um, and then that goes back into the actual video switcher person who's handling this. And like I said, this could actually be the video director or if you have enough people, it'll be somebody separate to where they're literally just managing, okay, every video input, they're dictating when that stuff goes up on the screen. Now, I know it sounds redundant to have that person doing that and the video, video director telling them when this could happen. But again, I guess in my mind, I sit back and think that after everything that's been going on, we need to understand that church is not a production but our live stream is a production um, to where we want to show the best quality of what's going on. We just don't want to throw just trash up there and we want to do everything with a spirit of excellence. So you can have a director that's help guiding the flow and have the vision of what this, the presentation of your service is going to look like online. Um, and again, that person could be the same person who's running the switcher itself, but I, ideally you need somebody who's going to have a flow. You're not just going to willy nilly just throw stuff up or you want it done neatly and professionally to where it's like, oh, we have scripture. Let's fade the scripture in. We're just not going to just boom. Oh, wait a minute. The scripture's up. It's been left up for too long. Um, the scripture is wrong. The camera's on a person who's not talking. It's at an empty, you know, you want them to have the flow to make it look professional. So that would be the person who's the video switcher operator or, you know, I, I don't, I'm just using these titles based off of what I have here. All right. So, so far we have the head, we have a sound engineer, we have a video director, we have cameramen, we have video switcher. Now, technically that's really all you need, but as we've learned with so many people live streaming, I really feel that you need to have someone who is dedicated to social media. And we talked about this before about the importance of um, treating your e-church, your virtual congregation with the same seriousness 
as people here in church, just like you have, you may have ushers, doorkeepers or whatever to handle the needs of the people that are in your church in the service of that point in time, you need to have like a, a E usher. I don't want to call it that. Um, but somebody who is, is manning the social media aspects of it, as in they're communicating with the people that are in your stream right now. Cause again, there's, there's, we are ministering to people who don't go to our church. So people are in need. So we need somebody who's just as serious about the call of what we're doing, interacting with the people in our live stream just in general good morning how are y'all doing you know letting people know hey we're available um, if you need prayer that there's somebody you can talk to um, you know you need to have somebody that will socially engage with people online and you know i really think that this is a great position for some youth in your church that are already doing this whether it be on instagram your live stream um, Twitter, whatever, TikTok, I mean, you can, doesn't matter what the social media platform, it's an opportunity to get them involved, but also understand the seriousness of what we're doing. And again, we don't want to just throw a live stream up and hey, yep, we did it. We're, 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 we're live streaming. No, you need to engage with the people just like you wouldn't just have somebody come into your church in the building and just preach and just ignore everybody there. That, that's a show. Um, this isn't a show. This is, yes, we need to produce it in a production, but this is impacting people and we need to have the same seriousness with that, which means we seriously need to have somebody dedicated to that role. So I don't know if you want to call that, um, I'll say social media manager. I, I don't know. I'm really not hung up on the names, but you need somebody that's dedicated for the social media during services going on, as well as they can go through the out throughout the rest of the um, week handling social media. And I got another video talking about that coming up soon about what to do and what not to do with church social media. All right, so I'm stopping this video right now because I realized I left off one position inside of this whole list of um, media ministry staff, and that is somebody that operates your graphics, whether that be your lyrics, your scripture, or presentations that need to be presented in the sanctuary, but also on your live stream. Now, again, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do this because you can do, there's plenty of software out there that's free, open LP. I know I personally like Worship Extreme, but then you might buy something like Easy Worship, Pro Presenter, Media Shout, Proclaim, whatever, but you need somebody that's gonna operate that. And now talk, thinking about all the other things, it's not very often that you're going to need to put up lyrics, scripture and presentations. So that person who is your social media manager could do the exact same thing because they're already in front of a computer. They could be looking at the live stream as well as, oh, wait a minute, you know what? I needed to put scripture and lyrics up and they can pause from the social media stuff and do that because that role doesn't prolong. I mean, doesn't last the entire service. It might be more. Um, might have to do some more activity when the sermon is coming up if your pastor or whoever's preaching is jumping around to different scriptures and they haven't told it to you ahead of time or if they're doing slides but either way you need to have some person that operates your presentation software in whatever capacity that is even if it's powerpoint so again that was the one thing i forgot so let's go back to earlier when I finish the rest of this video. Um, you could always roll into more stuff, but again, I'm just using this based off of what I have here in my church as an example. So let's go, let's do a refresher. That's what reason I wrote it down. You have the head that's managing the whole ministry and kind of the point of contact when anything needs to happen. You have your sound engineer. That's a dedicated position. They were, that's all they're focused on. They don't need to be scatterbrained and jumping all over the place. They need to be focused to make sure we have quality sound the entire time. You also have your video director, which could also be the person who handles your video switcher. It could be either um, two positions or one. You have your cameraman, one or many, and then you have your social media manager. Now, I guess one other thing I would add, which some churches obviously would not have um, access to this. I know because I get calls about this all the time. You might even want to have somebody else kind of like your, um, you know, IT support for church. 
because uh, again, I know I get calls like this all the time and I try and help when I can. <laughs> Most of the time people call me when I'm in the middle of church myself. But somebody that's there that knows the system to where if anything happens, they are your go-to person to get everything up and running so that something doesn't go crazy. Um, that's really optional, but pretty much everybody needs somebody like that, whether there's somebody that's there or um, access to reach somebody. Now, I'm working on something like that, me personally. So um, I try and help as much as I can, but obviously I'm just one person, but we got something coming down the pipe that can help um, churches at large with stuff like that. But that's about it. So we got the head in the chair, the sound engineer, video director, cameraman, your video switcher operator, your social media manager, and possibly your IT support. So if you're building your media ministry from the ground up or you already have one in place, these are kind of my recommendations on roles that need to be filled in your media ministry so that it flows well. So hopefully that helps and a list of that will be in the description as well as my website and all that other good stuff. So if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize the media ministry. And don't forget that if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron. Your contributions help to where we can get more equipment to help educate more churches all over the world, as well as that money goes to fund bigger and better giveaways that we do. So anyway, consider that and thank you in advance if that's you. Um, I wanna actually thank our patrons for this video and really appreciate that and thank for all the support that y'all are doing. So this is AJ and we will see you on the next video later.